Go. All right. Hey, everybody. If you're watching. Uh, okay. And then let's just make sure. If you're watching, send me a chat so I can see if that's working. Is this you, Jimbo? Are you? Uh, edit, customization, enable live chat. Save, live, live chat, replay. Okay. Uh oh, what's going on here? You would think that this would be easier. All right, if you're chatting with me, I cannot see it. Pop out chat. Oh, pop out chat. Hi. If that worked. Okay, so I'll put the chat over here just so I can see it. Okay. Whoop. All right, so today we are. I'm doing some painting on this custom Mando helmet. I've been working on for a while now. Uh, and I have the base coat down. I mean the, um, the top coat, but now I have to do some detail painting on here. So that's what I'm gonna do on my lunch break. And I'm actually also filming this on a couple cameras. Now, okay. All right. And if you've just popped in, throw something into the chat just so I can see if this is working correctly. I, there. Automaton. Hey, what's happening? Alex, how you doing? I think it's you and another person. Uh, that person is being quiet. Okay. So I need to uh, tape this stuff on. Yes, multicam. I have, I have one over here. Here, can I show you? I have one right there, and then I have my phone right there, and then I'm talking to you all live streaming on this one right here. And yes, Alex, your your recent uh, painting. or taping of the Falcon inspired me to do this. <laughs> Since I'm at a little bit of a standstill on the Falcon until our friends over at D'Agostini send us the missing pieces. All right, let's see. So I'm using uh, Tamiya masking tape it's probably some of the best masking tape you can get uh, when it comes to model work. <laughs> Your taping was epic, my friend. Um, they do make curved tape. And did you, did you ever, you, Alex, did you ever use the uh, curved tape at all? I was looking at picking some up, but then I was like, it looked a little too... Too uh, too complicated to be honest with you, for for this purpose for these purposes, for my Mando purposes. Although I have a feeling this is not. I've been told by the person that I'm doing this for that. I'm not doing this for the 501st or the Mandalorian Mercs, so this can be, this can have imperfections to it. 
Yeah, the, there's curved tape, and it, it's literally it's tape that looks serpentine almost. Um, and it's for for smaller detail um, detailing on like you know their tanks and ships, or hell, even the stuff that we work on for Star Wars. Um, but it was I, I couldn't find anything really wide. It was all pretty narrow stuff. So I'm just using regular regular Tamiya masking and uh, and just kind of freehanding the curves here, which I think will be okay. And I'm 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 masking this off. To, to reprime with some gray because I have some, obviously some backsplash when I did the blue. Oh, pinstripe tape, that's good. That's a good tip. Um, yeah, freehanding this. But you know, the imperfections too can be kind of made to look like weathering. So how how's your Falcon project coming? Any any word from our friends yet? I saw some disappointing posts in the forum the other day about the backlog. Well, there's three people. Who else who else is here? Introduce yourself. Say hello. If you're just joining, I'm masking off some parts of this custom Mando bucket. Just waiting for the container. Yeah. So I'm just gonna clean up this little area here because that's going to be a little wonky looking. And my edges aren't fully seated, which is a little obnoxious. And then let me clean that piece up too. And this just, I'm just trying to blend these tape oopsies into the run of the line so it's as straight as possible. That looks okay. I do need to. I like Tamiya also because uh, they have very, they have different sizes, uh, um, millimeter uh, widths of tape. So this is a six millimeter. Yeah, it is. It's uh, 3D printed. It's actually printed in, uh, gosh, six different pieces. I printed it on the um, on the uh, the Prusa, and uh, the Prusa has such a tiny print bed that I actually had to slice this up into multiple pieces. So I think it's uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six pieces. Six pieces. I actually did a video, or I am in the process of doing a video, which is what we're, we're filming right now, of this build. Uh, and, and I hopefully give everyone some good tips on how to print big things on little printers. It's the hobbyist's challenge, right? Big things, little printers. Yeah, thank you, man. It's uh, it's funny. At this point, it's mostly uh, filler primer, fiberglass, and bondo. And I actually fiberglassed the entire inside as well, just to give it some more strength, um, just to strengthen up all the seams, just in case. All right, so I feel okay about that, and then we can just do the sides here. Um, I 
I actually, oh, actually, let me put this on. You'll appreciate this because it's my next project. One of my next projects. I have like 10. But I have... Um, Have this, my, uh, you know what that is. So this was all 3D printed as well in, but uh, but this was printed actually ooh, two or three, uh, two years ago. Uh, and I've learned a lot since then. Uh, and so I actually may print this out again, uh, just because I, the, the resolution is just terrible. This was printed in ABS. This was printed in PETG. Um, and I printed this in ABS to try to get it to be, you know, very easy to finish. But what happens is when you print with ABS, you sacrifice bed adhesion and there can be warping and stuff like that. So it's going to be a kind of a pain. But yeah, I uh, once this guy is done and out, I'm going to start uh, working on this puppy. So yes, I will be emailing you lots of questions, I'm sure. All right, so we have this, actually. And I think I have all the pieces for that, all the armor pieces printed out. And I also may use it as an excuse to buy a buy that resin printer finally, so. <laughs> Who else is uh, in the chat? Say hello. Oh, I can see participants. Oh, it's just it's just us, but it says there's three people here. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so what I'm doing with this is so the, the this is blue, and then what I'm taping off um, those that negative space is going to be uh, chrome chrome silver which is an awesome, I love Tamiya paints. They smell like, they smell like childhood. They smell like candy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, I'll I'll only use uh, only use the uh, scout trooper when I'm uh, not able to Vader. Although we have, there's been a an influx in Vaders in my garrison lately, which is actually really great. Um, I would have expected more Kylos, uh, more Kylos. Actually, I'm going to use a smaller, smaller piece here to be more popular. I don't know what you're seeing in your garrison. I know this this height of mine is always a problem. And Alex, are you in the Golden Gate garrison? Is that yours? Is that your local? Is that what it's called? I'm not seeing anything. I'm doing. Oh, uh, yeah. Are you guys picking up at all? Like, is there? Yeah, G G G. Got it. Um, like, our our troops getting back onto the calendars yet or is it still relatively um relatively quiet we're seeing a slight slight pickup there's probably been i mean maybe a half a dozen troops in the past couple of months so it's not like it there are i'm seeing stuff right anyways Ow, these tweezers are really sharp. Hmm. 
aqui. This project has taken me. It's amazing what having kids does to your schedule. <laughs> Although I will say that, you know, being able to work from home and um, having the freedom from a commute has just been awesome. You know, having two hours extra in a day to focus on fun stuff. It's been really nice, right? Are you are you going back uh, to work anytime soon? Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah, our office is expected to open back up in September, um, but I don't think we have know like what that actually means in terms of like, is it a uh, is it a split schedule? Is there like an A squad and a B squad or A days and B days? Although my wife, I mean, she's been back teaching in person. For a month now, they used they were doing a hybrid, and um, and uh, then they uh, recently went back to full in person instruction. Okay. I hope this comes out all right. We'll be very disappointed. I mean, I guess again, when it comes time to weather this, um, if there are some imperfections in the paint, they can just be turned into blast marks. 75 miles, dude. Yeah, I think it's time to uh, each way. Wow. Time to uh, think about that. <laughs> When I worked for um, Victoria's Secret, that was in the city in uh, Manhattan. And uh, I was commuting upwards of, on public transportation, uh, about two hours a day. No, I'm sorry, no. It was four hours a day almost. Two in, two out. Yeah. And so when I, when I got a job, when I left there for a job in New Jersey, I got almost a day a week back just in... Uh, just in commute time. It was ridiculous. I think that's when the honey-do list exploded. It's like, oh, you're here. You have all this time. Why don't you... Why don't you gut this room and do all the drywall in it? <laughs> yes, honey. All right. We're getting there. So everything in this area here is going to be that, well, except for the cheeks, are going to be um, a permanent hybrid work schedule. That's awesome. Good for you. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on with us, whether it's going to be a hybrid or, um, or uh, not. And... I'm kind of liking these yellow stripes. <laughs> Just one. Burn down one wall. It's actually a smart idea. Now I need to like knock on wood to make sure I don't jinx anything. I'm doing some, I'm, I'm gutting our, or I've gutted our um, one of our guest bathrooms 
And uh, today she says, we should add another light in here. I'm like, oh man, electrical work. I thought this was just gonna be a swap and, swap and replace type of thing. So, uh, so now I have to, I've never been comfortable with the electrical stuff. I always hired that out. Plumbing's fine. Drywall's okay, painting, all that stuff, obviously. But for some reason, electrical, I'm just a little paranoid about it. Just one. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, well, that's very telling then. I'm, I'm a licensed marketer, <laughs> so I'm not qualified to do anything. <laughs> I'm qualified to sell widgets. And even then. All right. And then, so now we have the Tamiya down. And um, and so this is going to seem weird, but now I'm going to go back and uh, tape on some uh, just regular painter's tape. Uh, but I don't know if I have enough painter's tape. Now that I think about it. But what I can do is Yeah, I'll just do that. It's okay. Oh yeah, codes are insane. There's like I was looking up um something for the bathroom project. Uh, but yeah, there's 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 literally a, a code for everything. Uh, did you know that if you have a receptacle in the bathroom, it has to be a minimum, at least here in New Jersey, three feet away from the tub. Three feet. Someone said three feet is a perfectly safe distance from a bathtub to put your receptacle. How they came up with that, I have no idea. Enough for this. Now I do know that in rooms, I think the rule is like every receptacles should be no further than six feet apart from each other. Um, and that's because, and an electrician told me this, um, it's to avoid people putting extension cords in and tripping over them. Toaster power cords are two and a half feet. Ah, there you go. Look at that. That must be it. <laughs> the old toaster in the bathtub. The old dancing toaster routine. Oh, boy. I have like this this insane fear that when I rip all this tape off, it's just gonna take the uh, the blue off too. And that will make me sad. Okay, and then Yeah, I'm already scratching this thing up. I think after my scout trooper bucket, I'm just out of the bucket business. I don't want to do buckets anymore. This is a lot of work. Yeah, this blue, this blue was a Vallejo blue. Yep. Um, unfortunately, my 
my client for this project really loved the Vallejo blue. So, uh, and Tamia oddly didn't have a decent, uh, a decent kind of like deep, bright deep blue for me. Okay, we're almost there, we're almost there. Which is good because I'm almost out of paint. I mean, I'm almost out of tape. Okay, and then for the bucket, the dome, anything that I can put on there give him a shower cap there we go there we go I'm surprised there's no hecklers today. Last week was so uh, so full of the the jabs. Where's where's Tony and Jimbo and Scotty poking the fun? shower cap. <laughs> yeah, I didn't put that in the uh, the invite, the description. Heckling required. Okay. I feel okay about this. So what I'm going to do first is uh, I'm going to put a light coat of um, gray primer down to cover. Can you see that? Hurry up and paint something. Over. I know, I know. I'm sorry. This stuff takes forever. Um, cover the blue over spray uh, to help get me nice even base. There we go. God, I love that smell. So good, so good. What's also great about the Vallejo, though, is that it dries pretty quickly.
Here we go. Uh, this is the uh, CN, uh, the Neo, which uh, I actually have a couple of them. They're I, I, I actually really like them. They, they flow very nicely. I have my air pressure kind of cranked up on it uh, so I can get a bigger spray since I'm doing a lot of coverage right now. And I have this whole section here that was not even close to being covered. Well, hello, C. My Shell. How are you, buddy? Craig, meet Alex. Alex, meet Craig. The Aussie geocacher is awesome. We're taking a class together right now. Oh, nice. Yeah, let me know how you like the eclipse. I'm still using the uh, Medea cleaner. I know, right? Good job last night. In uh, in class, so I'm going to give this another a couple minutes to to dry before I move on. Um, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to top coat this with uh, chrome silver. Acting class, figured I'd dust off my SAG card and start putting it to use. So uh, we're taking acting classes. So what the uh, the top coat is going to look like is uh, is this. So it's this chrome. It's not nearly as shiny as the lights making out to look, but um, but this is what the uh, the the top coat will look like. So this area here will be this nice shiny chrome. Uh, and then once that's all dry and the tape's removed, I'll put a top coat I'll put a, uh, a clear coat on top of it to to protect it from any additional scratches. So yeah, I agree. it's definitely getting interesting. Um, and the homework assignment is uh, is going to be fun to say the least uh, but i liked your story that was that was a really good one um, yesterday definitely gives us an opportunity to uh to get comfortable comfortable with ourselves oh and i meant to tell you uh yesterday but uh, i used to live in oklahoma i lived in oklahoma for three years uh, i lived in oklahoma city went to uh did my at least my freshman year of high school there, uh, and, and uh, ended my middle school career there. Uh, it is a beautiful town, and it's changed quite a bit over the last. Uh, let's see, that was '97 was when I left, so 23 years, 24 years. God damn, I'm getting old. Why? Why is that happening? Can we stop the process? Can we? We have not invented de aging yet, or or. Uh, or pausing of age, yeah, no? All right, let's do this one more time. How long do I have to let this dry for? Twelve hours before that. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let this dry for now. I'm gonna end the stream. Well, we did a good, uh, yeah, I went back, uh, let's back in the fall of 2019 to see some friends and, uh, and they took me around Bricktown and it's definitely changed. It's, it's beautiful there, uh, on the bad end of forties, at least <laughs> I, I, I heard that the, that forties are, are supposed to be like the prime time. My wife informed me the other day that I'm actually 40 and 40 like I thought. Well, that is just a rude awakening. I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, that's that's a yeah, I I uh just turned 40 in February. And I will say that that 
um, it was an interesting transition, you know, <laughs> to be like, oh, wow, this is actually happening. And, uh, you know, my wife and I were talking this morning about, you know, she's a teacher, so she gets a pension from the state and all that stuff. And she's talking about, well, you know, when I retire, you know, if I retire at 65 instead of 55 or whatever. And I'm like, 55, that's 15 years from now. Wow. This is just going to be flying by. Well, that's good. Well, of course they've been great. You, you, you met me. <laughs> my, 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 my BD1 video has made your life so much more interesting, hasn't it? <laughs> I'm also very self-absorbed, if you had no idea. How quickly do you think I can put a coat of paint on this thing? I mean, it doesn't say... I mean, is it... It's, no, it's still a little wet. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do... Oh, thanks, buddy. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to let this dry, and then I will put the chrome silver on. But I tell you what, um, I may actually be coming that way, and I will absolutely let you know. Um, it might be it might be June or July. Do it now. <laughs> well, you know, there is one other thing I need to touch up while I have the... Uh, brush out is uh, I actually do have to do some touch-ups on here. So let's put this aside then. And this is a, a visor for the bucket. And I did have some areas I could use some love. But yeah, I'll absolutely let you know when I'm in, um, in San Francisco. I actually think I'll be doing a fly in to LA and then flying out of SFO. So yes, we will grab a beer on me. They are, they absolutely are 3d printed. The Mando bucket is all, that's all 3d printed. Um, I was showing Alex earlier, this scout trooper bucket is 3d printed. All kinds of fun, nerdy stuff going on here. One day, if I want to take the whole bucket making thing seriously, I'm going to uh, get, oh, I don't need this for that. I'm going to get a, um, what is it, a CR10 Max? It's like a big ass, tall printer. So you can put a uh, print a bucket in like one fell swoop. Uh, and so, not have to cut it up into pieces and then go through that process. Oh yeah, printing, so printing all of these individually, I mean, you're talking, hmm, I, it, it was probably all in all like two or three days uh, worth of print time. Like some of these took like 12 hours to do. I think so. I think that's the one that you can do the R2 dome. Although the R2 dome is is pretty damn big, but yeah, I think that's the one. All right, so I'm loaded with blue. I can just get these little areas here. I could not imagine 3D printing R2. Are you are you doing the 3D printed R2? Or you? What do you, what do you, which one are you working on right now? Or are you just doing the, the Falcon? Uh -huh. Got it. And Craig, are you, are you into 3D printing at all? Have you given that a, uh, a try yet? Ooh, yeah, that's not fun. Nice. Oh yeah, I remember you were showing me that.
I've actually been kind of secretly finding parts to possibly do a life-size um, speeder bike. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a fun hobby. It's, it can be a frustrating hobby. But, but it seems like you have a hobby that already is, uh, is quite fulfilling with the uh, geocaching. Oh, nice. Good. Wow. That took forever to dial that in. Okay. I think that looks good. Now, now, Craig, this this voyage that you just went on to Oklahoma and other places was that purely for your geocaching, or um, were you already planning on doing that, and the geocaching was just a bonus? Ah, gotcha. Well, if you ever want me to uh, make you one, let me know. I could make a episode about it. We can do a uh, we can do a crossover episode. <laughs> uh oh, I think my I think my brushes. The brushes clog. What's the best thing you've gotten from a geocache? Ah, nice. <laughs> no way. <laughs> She's a fellow geocacher. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Happy anniversary. That's great. All right. Well, this is clogged. Boom, boom, boom. All right. So... We are going to have to. All right. Well, I am going to shut this one down. My brush is now clogged, so I have to go and clean that up. I'm still just going to let this dry. But thank you, folks, for hanging out with me and uh, watching me nerd out over my 3D prints. Good to catch up. And uh, I think I'm going to make this like a regular thing. Uh, so every Friday, like around 1, 1 30, I'll do a live stream of whatever is going on. Um, awesome. Well, I'm glad you guys liked it. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, it was good to uh, get good, good to chat. I one day we'll figure out how to do some sort of like Zoom version of this that we can live stream because it would be way cooler to like see your faces and hear your voices versus just reacting to a chat. So um, that's on my, that's a homework assignment for me. But anyway, Alex, I'll talk to you later. Craig, I'll see you in class. I'll talk to you later. And the other two people who are, who are watching, like don't know who you are, but thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Oh, steam yard. Okay. I will check them out. Thank you, my man. Thank you. Steam yard. All right. See everybody.